In this video, we'll see how to create an in-sale chart that shows the current stock price compared to the lowest price and the highest price over the past 52 weeks. To do this, we'll create a dot plot chart similar to this simpler one that shows student scores on a scale of 0 to 100 and it uses the repeat function. On this sheet, I have the stock price data for a couple of companies showing the low high and last prices. At the top of the worksheet I've created a cell that is going to set the width for the in-cell charts and in this cell I've formatted it with courier new font because that's a non-proportional font and every letter gets the same width in the cell. And in that cell I've set the font size to 8 and in that cell I've entered a repeat function. We're going to repeat lowercase l 24 times and then at the end put a lowercase o. When I press enter here you can see the l's and the o I'm using as a marker at the end so I can make sure everything's included in these two cells. I can adjust the cell slightly. I just want to make sure that o at the end is just touching the right side of G. The next thing I'll do is create a function in this cell that counts the characters in our measurement cells. So in here type equals len for length, open bracket, click on cell F1, close the bracket and press enter. So we have 25 characters and over here we're going to create a symbol that we can use as our marker. So I'll format this cell in courier new and make it 8 point and to insert a symbol, I'll go to the Insert tab and in the Symbols section, click Symbol. In this dialog box, I've selected Courier New as the font and Box Drawing. You can use this full block or any other symbol that you choose. Select it and click Insert and Close. And now that symbol is in cell E1. The next step is to create the repeat function in cell F5. I've entered the repeat function here and you can see that it's certainly more complicated than the simple one we saw earlier. This one instead of repeating an L is going to repeat the space character. So we'll see nothing and then the marker at the very end and the marker is what we put in cell E1. So if you change that symbol a different symbol would appear as the marker here. Then we have to figure out where that marker should fall in this range of cells. So the range here goes from $24 to $30 up here it's going from 350 to 660 so there's a much bigger range here compared to here but we want both of them in the same range on the worksheet. So in this formula we calculate the difference between the last price and the low price and that tells us how far along the cells that marker should fall. We divide that by the difference from the high price to the low price and then we multiply that amount by the value in H1 which is the number of characters in this cell. And finally we subtract 1 because we're going to add one character at the end. When I press enter you can see the marker. So the last price is very close to the high price. I copied the same formula to this cell and you can see that the last price here is closer to the middle. And the final thing we can do is format that marker. So in this cell you can add green font coloring instead of leaving it as automatic. I've also added another repeat function in the row above and it's the same formula except I subtract three so it doesn't go as far over. I'm trying to center that price over the marker. In the cells below the little chart I've linked to the low price and to the high price so we can see those. And this cell I colored green so that it's the same as the marker. After you've finished creating and formatting the in-cell chart. You can hide any rows and columns that aren't needed. I've only left A, F and G showing and I've hidden the rows at the top because those won't be needed either. So now all that's left on this sheet is the symbol and the stock marker and prices. For more Excel tips and tutorials and to download the sample file for this tutorial, please visit my website at www.contextures.com.